Hey, what up, players? It's Warboss Tay, and I am here with my 500 point Imperial Guard army facing off against Ryan from Red Chair Painting's 500 point Eldar army. And we are playing a special campaign called The Raid on Triton. And it's a campaign that uh, Ryan, and I, Ryan and I are going to be doing an Escalation League. So this is the first one, it's called the Combat Patrol. And we've got our 500 point armies we're going to set up. First thing we have to do is roll for battlefield conditions. There, These are these special things that uh, affect us in this game. So I'm gonna be doing that and he's gonna be rolling up, what were you rolling up? Weather conditions. Weather conditions, yeah. Which is another cool special rule. So, so four. Four okay. is? Ruins, okay. Ruins. So randomly place D3 minus one lightning rods, which is a special uh, thing for our game, plus D3 booty counters on the battlefield. Roll a dice on a roll of a six, roll once on the Terrors of Triton table. We're not going to use that. Those are like little uh, Tyranids that come on onto the table and cause some trouble. So we're not going to use that rule for this one because it's a smaller game. Uh, replace D3 terrain pieces with ruins if they wish players may litter the battlefield with additional ruins. So I think we've got enough stuff here. We've got all of our random terrain on the table. So D3 minus one, is it? D3 minus one lightning rods. Zero. Zero. <laughs> and D3 booty counters. Okay, two. Two. <clears throat> okay. So do you want to explain the uh, the booty counters and what, what those are in the campaign? So the booty counters, um, there's two of them. So they, you can grab them um, and they get attached to the unit if you make base to base. And uh, they stick with your unit until the unit is destroyed. Um, and if you hold on to a unit that holds on to them until the end of the game, gets, I can believe, five points added to its uh, entire army. So you can start collecting them and you'll get a little bit of an advantage as the game goes along if you start um, getting these the, getting these objectives. All right, very cool. We are going to set up the terrain now. It's all placed in the middle so that we're going to set them up, and then we'll set up our armies. Then we'll show you what the deployment is and what we've what we've brought to the table, and uh, get on with the first turn. Okay, here's our little uh, battlefield setup. We've got ruins and ruins. We've got ruins in the back. Two forests here, a hill here. One more hill back here, and a hill over there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to roll for weather conditions, which uh, could be not so bad or could be pretty horrible. Here we go. Ryan's going to roll for it. Three. Three is normal. normal. We're good. Okay. Good, good, good. So no adverse weather. We also have uh, our two loot tokens right here. So whoever is in control of those two at the end of the game get a little bit of extra swag. All right, so Ryan won the roll off for deployment, and we've got a we've got a little bit of a dilemma here. When we were setting up our random terrain, this area ended up as like a, this very big no man's land kill zone. But you've got two loot counters right here, pretty much out in the open. So uh, you've got a lot of great cover and area terrain over there. So Ryan, why don't you tell us your thoughts on on how you're gonna go about this? So I'm not sure. I need to get mobile. I need to get behind the Aegis defense line so I can uh, get the AP5, AP4 shots down. Um, I also need cover for my troops as they're coming in, so uh, I'm tempted to take a wooded area so that, or force Tay into a wooded area so that I can, uh, I can do that. Let's go with, <laughs> alright, I'm going to force you both here. Okay. Let's, let's just do that. All right. So we're going to deploy now and I'll, I'll uh, start filming again once we have our armies deployed. All right, here's my here's my deployment and uh, stepping back and looking at it, I I regret making such a big Krieg dance party in the center. Uh, that's all right though, I'm all set up, I'm ready and uh, this is what we're doing. I think in my head I put the defense line a little bit farther back. I didn't take advantage of putting it all the way at the front of my quarter. Um, to, to give his Dire Avengers here a little bit more room to, to to come in and give us a little bit more breathing room. But now it's it's like a, it's like the boys' locker room, just completely packed with guys that are just waiting for a blast template to eat. Commissar Bane is right there, chilling. You've got my company command squad over here with the auto cannon on the second floor. 
Uh, you've got the blob squad here kind of spread out. You've got the smaller squad here in the back and then platoon squad here and veterans manning the quad gun. So hopefully wherever those pesky swooping hawks come in, uh, we'll be able to counter them. Hopefully, I don't know. I've never played before. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, <laughs> what are we doing next? And here, here is a... Uh, Here's the 10 Dire Avengers, and you've got uh, two squads of 10 Swooping Hawks and... Two squads of five. Oh, two, two squads of five, five, sorry. And seven Striking Scorpions. All right, and this, their, their special rules are that the Swooping Hawks have Reserve or Infiltrate? They have, um, they start Reserve, they Deep Strike. Oh, okay, okay. So they'll be popping in. And these guys come in through Infiltrate. Inf yeah, these guys are Infiltrators. All right, so, so let's, let's bring them in. to go outside of 12. I don't know, like, or I can be 18, so... No. It's still pretty much the same, so I think I have to go 18. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe this? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If I just pointed that out. Oh, Trixie Space Elves. I go, you gotta see him there. All right. Um. Okay. Uh, I guess I have to go eat that. So what are you doing right now? So I am trying to get my Strike Scorpions um, as close to the line as possible, but I don't right. think I can manage the out of line of sight, so I have to go 18. Oh. Right, so oh, so there's a special rule that if if anyone can see you, you've got to go up to you got to go to 18. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So we're gonna just toe the line here. Oh. And they almost made it. I'm scared. I'm scared. Not only are they you outnumber me two to one. That's all right. That's all right. You've got you've got space elf magic dust. Not only are they well painted, but these striking scorpions are the older models, and uh, therefore they they have the magic of the years weighing down on them. So they're going to give them lucky dice rolls like that. So those are infiltrators. Those set up after everybody else sets up. Alright, so. Do this and pray to God that he does not seize. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this on okay. YouTube. So is this one? Is this one the seizing Go. happens? Going for the, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Oh, don't don't get a six. Come on, sixes. No. Okay. Ah, four. Yeah, it's a four. Oh, shoot. Oh, well, it was a four. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan's got the first turn. Okay, so could you hold this for me? Um, uh, yeah, sure, give me a second. So what we did just now was we rolled our ro Warlord traits. Uh, I forgot to roll before we set up, and um, so I got moved through cover for my Warlord, which is uh, the guy in the cool leather jacket and any units within 12 inches. And Ryan's going off of the Eandin supplement, and he got, for his Warlord and his unit, all 10 of them, they get hatred against my guys, which means they get to re-roll all misses. Yep, all misses in the first round of combat. All right, my mind is blown. I can't believe it. End of turn one. Uh, I just kept my guys parked there. Well, first let's go to the Eldar. He moved his striking scorpions up. He wanted to stay out of the um, the the twelve inch half range of the rapid fire las gun. So my first rank fire, second rank fire couldn't get his scorpions, and he moved all his these guys further up into the cover. And they shredded a couple of guys here in the front with their with their shuriken weapons. Uh, I, I I love the order system. I'm kind of glad I was worried about not taking the psyker, but I'm glad I took the company command squad to kind of get a wrap my head around the order system. My company command squad uh, issued. Well, before I get to that, was there anything I missed from the from your uh, turn, Ryan? One guy died here. Oh, oh yeah, one one elder. Four scorpions died. Yeah, one dire adventure died there. Four scorpions died. 
<clears throat> and then, yeah, in my turn, we did uh, uh, I had the, the, the one that ignores cover saves, and I think that's the one that killed that guy there with my, with my auto cannon. And then the rest just shot a barrage of flashlight beams at those guys and took out four of them, uh, including the, this thing, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, so so they are they're running, and because they're below half strength, that means they're they're not coming back. But uh, I, I think there's still there's still a lot to be scared of because of the the swooping hawks that are probably going to be coming in soon. So turn one is done. We're headed on to turn two. Okay, turn two recap. Uh, the dire avengers moved up. Those guys ran away a little bit, but the swooping hawks came in and made a total mess of my bro party here at the back. They killed Commissar Bane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, oh well. And then they, they stomped this big hole, they killed all my veterans and they made this huge hole in the middle. I killed one of them, managed to shoot him to bits, but the other one uh, managed to get only two of them taken down and they passed their leadership test. So this is the state of things at the bottom of turn number two. <laughs> Alright, top of three. The Eldar have breached the Imperial line and uh... Um, it's, it's gonna get real cozy in a little while. Okay, this is the bottom of three, I think. I think it's the bottom of three, and the Eldar are, are, are not hanging around. You've got the super strong, beefy Altark here, who's still, who's still in the game, and you've got some shooty, sh super shooty swooping hawks that can come and probably decimate uh, anything with their super shooty weapons. So uh, we're probably gonna be wrapped up by the end of the next turn. Uh, what happened, what happened? Uh, the Dire Avengers charged in, they chopped up a bunch of my guys, they totally destroyed my blob unit, and um, uh, what else happened? Gosh, I don't even remember, and then, and then in my turn- they got blasted. <laughs> yeah, and, and then in my turn I gave a fir first rank, second rank fire to these guys, and they just shot a whole bunch of flashlights into them, and wow, when you're in that 12 inch kill zone, it's, uh, it's pretty effective. And thanks to some good dice rolling. <laughs> All right, we'll, 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 we'll probably wrap it up by the end of next turn. See you then. The game could end here. Okay, so, so let's recap what happened. Um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. They're slugging it out now. The Altark charged into there and they're slugging it out. Took my company commander down by one wound. Killed one of my auto cannon guys. And uh, these guys are just lobbing shells into the swooping hawks who reappeared and are now going for that loot counter. So hopefully we can uh, get them down enough that they do not uh, um, hold that hold that table corner. Okay. All right, the game ended and we've got uh, one Autark and three swooping hawks left. So victory conditions. It means that uh, my opponent won because he's in control of two table quarters. Or in control of one. Or in control of one and contesting, contesting one. Contesting one. Oh, okay, okay. So that's still more than I got. I was I was thinking just this last turn I could have uh, ran this guy off into another table quarter. The he lone was, uh, below survivor. Half. He was what? Below half. Oh, he's below half. So you yeah. kind of control so table yeah, quarters. Yeah. Oh, okay, so there was. The only thing you could have done was was shoot shoot, up, shoot holes into this altar. Yeah, they're they're safely tucked away behind there, um, and yeah, the only um, the Altark just breezed through my uh, company command squad in this last turn. The the Commander refractor put field, a good fight. you know, yeah, he put up a good fight. I think neither of us were really geared out for combat. Um, your shooting was just so good. Eldar's shooting was was so good, and well, the, well, the shooting phase for. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the rapid fire was. Oh yeah, the orders. I was not. I did not expect taking that many casualties from the um, from the rank fire. That was brutal. Yeah, these brutal. guys were just kind of hanging out in the back. I kind of really didn't even have a plan for them, and they just kind of just shot holes right into that squad of dire avengers. Um, so victory to the Eldar for the first game, and also uh, completely wiped out my blob squad. Uh, the Commissar, I'm not counting as a character because he's a unit upgrade, right? It's, I don't yes, think it counts as a character. Yeah, so he's a unit upgrade. So, he's so a four up for the lookout, sir. Yeah. Right, right. So he's a four up for the lookout, sir. And uh, my company commander is dead, which means that for the campaign rules, I have to see what uh, what he's going to start the next battle with, what kind of horrible, horrific injury, and whatnot. And uh, a whole lot of. Um, we have to look back at the videos and see what uh, camp campaign points we each were able to get because he wiped out my my warlord and um, 
Uh, but I did get some good shots in, killed the Dire Avengers and one of the squads of Swooping Hawks. So uh, we will calculate all that. Nobody was able to claim these loot counters, but uh, still it was a great game. Great first game, and uh, as, a, as a new player and Imperial Guard person, I'm, I'm very happy with the way it went. Sweet!